Hey everybody, welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how to light a catalytic heater. I'm also going to be restoring this one that I picked up on the cheap. All right, everybody, welcome back. Um, I picked this up, a Plan B Preparedness and Survival, and for those of you that are local, that's in town here, um, for $10. This is a catalytic heater. It can also be used as a stove. This is the snuffer here. I do have the screws. You know, I, I, I want to show this restoration on video, but I'm such a junkie when it comes to restoring things that I had to take the screws out. <laughs> but normally what that does is it goes on top and caps it. It also can be used as a stove, and this can be used as a pot with a pair of pot holders. But its main purpose is as a heater. So what we're going to do is I'm going to explain to you what this is, how to, how to use it, and then I'm going to kind of clean it up a bit, not really restore it, because there's really nothing wrong with it. I just paint it, clean it up, sand it down a little bit, and make it look a little prettier. And then we'll actually run it and test it out. So, catalytic heater. Basically what you're doing is you're going to have fuel in the bottom here. It's going to work its way up into these, this wick of non-flammable material. The black you see on here is not burns, it's kind of just stains. See how my finger's dirty? It's soot more than anything. And we're going to be cleaning off this and kind of bending it straight. There's a couple spots in here that need to be bent straight. But um, basically what it does is it doesn't burn, it smolders. That's the best way to describe it. If you've ever used a pocket heater, a hand warmer type thing, the uh, Zippo one, it's kind of the same principle. You'll light it, it'll burn for about five, five to four, four to five minutes. There'll be lots of flame. And then it will settle down and all this will just turn red. So it's a noiseless, flameless heater once it settles down. You do want to light it outside. You don't want to keep this inside a tent or anything like that unless you have very good ventilation, but you'd never want to light it inside of anything. So when we do test it and light it, we'll be lighting it outside. Basically, this one has a bunch of wick material in the base here. You're going to fill this up with camp fuel only. A lot of people get the conception that the idea that this can be used with um, gasoline. Don't use it with gasoline. It will ruin it. There's a bunch of foam down in there. Not foam, but uh, wicking material. Kind of like cotton, all in here. You're going to fill this up. You're going to put a little bit of your camp fuel around the outside there. And if you really want it to speed up, you're going to cover this, of course. You're going to tip it upside until upside down until there's a little bit of a dust, silver dollar sized wet spot in the middle. Then you're going to light it. Once you light it, that heat will draw the fuel up and it will smolder after it burns off. So it does take a little bit to get going, but once it gets going, it'll go for around 10 to 12 hours. It, the peak heat will be reached in about 15 to 20 minutes. So if you're planning on using this indoors or a large tent, and make sure it's a large tent, you need to keep the heater unobstructed, and when, when you use it, you make sure you have adequate ventilation. Just because there's no flame doesn't mean you can't get uh, carbon monoxide poisoning from it. So I'm going to take the first few steps here in cleaning it up. The first thing I'm going to do is refinish it. I'm going to take some sandpaper to it, and like I said, this is probably going to be a multi-day video. You're going to see it all in, in one thing, but I want the paint to dry correctly. I want the stuff to be done correctly, so I'm not going to try to rush this all in one day. So I'm filming the first part today. You'll see the second part, you know, five seconds later, but like I said, it's going to be a multi-day video. So let me get some sandpaper out and rough this all up here and clean it, too. I want to make sure there's no uh, leftover oils or contaminants on it. Some of this paint's just chipping right off. So it should be fairly easy. Um, I was going to put this in my sandblaster, but the reason I took these screws out is I want to take this head off. It does not come off easily, and I don't want to bend anything. And really, this isn't a critical thing. So if I just take some tape and cover all this up around here, it'll be fine. So anyway, let me get my sandpaper out, and I'll show you what it looks like after I've sanded it down. All right, so there it is. It's not sanded perfectly. Like I said, I could have put it in my sandblaster. I really don't want to put that much time into it. I just took, by the way, this 3M sandpaper, this purple stuff, is amazing. I took some 220 grit sandpaper and really just started to go to town outside on the ground with it and uh, blast at it, and it just stuff just fell off. A lot of this was chipped in old paint. I forgot to tell you the type this is, the, the brand, the company that made this. It's a Bill Dodge Outdoors Association. Actually, Bill Dodge Outdoorsman Association. It's a catalytic stove slash heater. Um, I found that out from looking it up online, and all I really started with was going to Google image search and searching red catalytic heater, you know? 
And I found a site that specializes in all this old gear. It's probably made around the 60s, 70s, around that area uh, of time. So I'm going to blast it with some of that red paint. And like I'm going to show you here, it's the Calper paint for 900 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, resistance to the heat, stops rust. And again, this doesn't need to look perfect. This is really just to making it look nice because I'm going to be using it out here once it gets cold. And uh, just kind of showing you that you can do a lot with uh, a little bit of money. I mean, I have 10 bucks into this, 4 bucks into the sandpaper, and maybe 5 bucks into the paint. And it's going to look like brand new. And to be truthful with you, I did try it before sanding it. And you know what? It worked perfectly without any of all this fluff. So you really don't have to clean it up if you don't want to. Just goes to show that you should check out your thrift stores, your uh, all sorts of military surplus places. Always check them out when you're new and you're trying to save some money with prepping. Now I'm going to take this outside, shoot it with some red paint. We're going to do a bunch of light coats on it, and I'll show you some of that. And uh, we'll finish it up and let it dry, and we'll bring you back. All right, so I've done a couple of light passes here, and I do see a piece of paint that's going to flick off, so I just got rid of it. Um, you want to do this really light. Nice light passes on it. So you can still see the old paint through it. We're not trying to cover that up yet. We're just trying to do some light coats. And this is how I do pretty much anything with the out of the can spray paint. And it's important to keep shaking the spray paint up too. But anyway, go at this a little while and uh, bring it back when it's done. All right, it's in its place inside here. I didn't want to leave it outside even though the sun's beating down on it. Um, I left it out for a little bit, but I'm afraid of dust collecting on it. Anyway, that's your quick little lesson in doing some nice smooth paint. No, I mean, it's not perfect. You can still see some scratches through the paint. I'm not worried about that. I really just wanted more of a protective coating on it and to kind of make it look original like it looked to begin with. So, we're going to let this sit probably for 24 hours. Make sure it's nice and clean and dry. And I'm not going to rush it because I always have a tendency to rush things like this and think, oh, that looks awesome. Oh, yeah, it's dry. And then I go to grab it and I get fingerprints all over it. So we're going to let it sit and just chill out. And uh, when I bring you back, once it's all done, I kind of cleaned off the top too. So once it's all done, we're going to fill it up and I'm going to demonstrate how it works. So I'll see you probably tomorrow. All right. So through the magic of editing, it's two days later. I let it cure for two days. The paint itself says to cure for seven days. I'm not letting it cure for seven days <laughs> before before I test it. It's fully dry. Um, no problems at all. It came out pretty good. Got a few runs here and there, but again, this was really more to protect it from rust and corrosion than anything. Bottom definitely looks better. So, I'm going to show you how to fill this up and light it. Now, I'm going to warn you first off the bat, when you light this before it starts doing its catalytic thing, you want to light this outdoors because this will flame up. It's not one of those things where, well, if there's enough ventilation, no, you want to take this outside to light it. It will flare up, um, it will burn pretty high, so you definitely want to uh, take it outside and let it burn off. And when that flame goes out, that's when the heat will start generating, because you'll be sucking up the uh, fuel through the wick, and it will start to kind of smolder and burn very slowly up here. There won't be any flame visible. Now, as you can tell, I also cleaned up the top a little bit. There's still a little bit of a torch mark there, but it's, it's been cleaned up pretty well. Um, I never did manage to get this out mainly because I didn't want to damage the metal here. I could have fried it out, but I noticed that it started to tweak the metal out. So it works. I know it works because I tried it before I restored it. I didn't want to bother doing all that for something that's just going to get black again. So here's how you do these. Let me show you the thing real quick. Now the first obvious thing is you've got to fill it up with fuel. I put a little fuel in this just to soak the, uh, the wicking material inside there, but it's going to need a lot more. So I would say about two cups of fuel for this. Um, this is about the size of the Coleman stove, and that's what they recommend. Unfortunately, there are no directions for this at all on the internet. But it's a fairly simple item. Not complicated to use, so if you find one of these and you don't find directions somewhere, don't freak out about it. Now, with what I've put in in that, that's probably more than enough. I'm going to be extra careful and let that drip because I don't want to get that any on the paint before it's fully cured after seven days. All right, now up top, what you want to do, there are two ways of doing this. Let me explain that first. Um, you can do this one of two ways. You can either tip it upside down and hold it upside down for about, I don't know, five minutes or so, and you'll get a, like a two-inch circle of wet up here, and you can light that. 
If you're a little pressed for time, like I don't want to sit here and make you guys wait for it and cut off the camera and wait for an hour for it to start dripping, usually takes more like 10-15 minutes. Um, you can just put a little bit around the outside and across and do it that way. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to get the uh, my little uh, siphon and uh, we're going to put some stuff up there and uh, try siphon. it out. Syringe. Don't know where my brain is sometimes when I do these videos. So I'm just going to do a little circle here, all the way around the outside. That's really it. Okay. Now while that's soaking in there, I'm going to set up outside. I'm going to take it outside and we're going to lay it. Now as you can tell, that's obviously going to flare up and the flames will get pretty high. So you don't want to do this indoors. I know I've told you that a few times, but I want you to listen real close. Because I don't want people blaming me for burning down their house. So, let's get it outside on a table, light it up, and uh, take a look. Alright, to light the top, just any lighter, match, whatever. And there you go. Now you see why I told you to keep it outside. It's going to do that for about five to, uh, five to eight minutes. Once it settles down, you will notice that it starts um, getting less and less of a flame. Then it's probably ready to bring inside and it's actually heating. Right now it's just burning off and kind of heating the fuel up so it'll suck it back up down the center and soak down everything. So let me give that a few minutes. i got to change out batteries on my camera and uh, I will bring you back. So you can kind of see the end of the flames there. They're just starting to uh, to settle down a little bit. Of course it's going to be, of course it's going to be warm because it was just burning. But once that settles down and fully goes out, we'll bring it inside and I have a new heat gun so I can test the heat coming off it. Um, and I'll be doing a full review of that later, but we will use it in this video just to show you the heat. So, let's wait till it fully goes up, and I'll bring you back. So, all the fire is out, and that is definitely warm. That's definitely getting there. They say it takes about 15 to 20 minutes for it to reach maximum heat. So I'm going to let it sit for a while, but I want to get some readings off it. Let's see where we're at here. 391, I don't know if you can see that. It will move around as I move it. So it's getting up there. And by the way, this is the Ryobi um, thermometer that measures from a distance. I'm probably going to be sending this back because it only goes up to 600 degrees. That isn't too helpful when I'm trying to review stoves and stuff. Just something for you to look. I'd rather you guys learn from my mistake and uh, check out stuff before you buy it. I thought, oh, heat gun, affordable, cool, let's get it. <laughs> and it only goes up to 600 degrees. So, while it is working for this particular application, I don't know that I'd want to use it for other things. Especially for stoves and stuff that get over that. So, we're at about 384, 385. I'll give it a little bit more time, and we'll see how nice and warm it gets. It is getting nice and warm. And by the way, this I did clean up. And these are made in Japan, um, stamped there. This is the snuffer. If you leave this on when you're done with this for the night and you're all finished, you don't need any more heat, you take this, you put it over the top, and eventually it'll snuff it out. I did try it last night. It does work very, very well. Uh, it does take a while. It's not instant. It'll take about uh, 10 minutes or so before it starts cooling off. And this will get really hot, so you don't want to put it on there and snuff it out and check and lift it up. You'll burn your fingers. Anyway, that is my little restoration of this little catalytic stove slash heater. It's really a heater. Um, it is a Bill Dodge Outdoorsman's Associate catalytic stove and heater. It is a very old kind of obscure brand and I did pick it up for 10 bucks. I mean for 10 bucks you really can't go wrong. Cleaned it up, did a little bit of this caliper paint, you know for your brake calipers and uh, looks to be holding up pretty well. I like how it came out and it's definitely another option and again another budget friendly way of keeping your area heated. Um, once this is like this, you can bring this in again, keep it ventilated. You want to keep a nice cross breeze going, but it will warm up your area very, very quickly. I can feel it getting warmer already. Let me see if I'm just feeling things or... 370, 324, okay. So it's between three, 320 and 370. So it is warming up nicely. It is getting a little warmer. So uh, I'm pretty pleased with it. And again, you know, you got to keep your eyes out for deals like this when you start uh, prepping out if you're trying to do it on a budget. Real budget-friendly item, real simple to use. Even the Coleman, the brand new ones, if you can find them around, you know, they don't go for a ton of money. And there's really not a lot that can go wrong with something like this. It's really just a big wick that goes into this that goes down there. 
Anyway, folks, thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out our Amazon store down below. Um, most of the items I review in the channel end up in the Amazon store, so if you want to see stuff there, you can check it out. If not, just click the link and shop as you normally would. It really helps us out. Don't forget to check out our Thrive Life link and our Olight link as well underneath. And I thank you for watching. Stay safe and stay prepared.